I've been a slave all my life. We've never seen this story on television before. The struggle of slaves to find freedom has captured the public imagination. It's really an American story of honoring these revolutionaries. It was a unique moment in American history. It was the first integrated civil rights movement of our country. A lot of people don't know that. Families, both black and white, played a part. Here is a family who are willing to risk life and limb, their own security, to guarantee the freedoms of others. Many remain unsung heroes whose names you've never heard before. It made me scratch my head thinking, how come William Still is not like a common name that everyone knows? Join us on the Underground Railroad for a journey back in time. The Enterprise remains a golden chapter in the history of human endeavor. It is one of the most iconic scenes from Harriet Beecher Stowe's pre-Civil War classic, Uncle Tom's Cabin. Slave girl Eliza and her baby escape hunters by leapfrogging ice flows across the river, based on an actual event near Ripley, Ohio. This 1903 film marks the first time anywhere that Americans could catch a glimpse of what it was like to travel the Underground Railroad. Hi, I'm Robin Hamilton, and we have come here to Sandy Spring, Maryland, to one of the official trails on the Underground Railroad Network. It's been nearly 200 years since slaves followed trails like this, but it wasn't until recently that this chapter of American history began to inspire a real cultural moment. The book is out uh, everywhere. The first selection in Oprah's revitalized book club Colson Whitehead's best-selling novel, The Underground Railroad, won the 2016 National Book Award for Fiction. Colson Whitehead, welcome to the stage. Whitehead's deep dive into what he calls a dark corner of the human soul didn't seem to discourage readers. I'm always just you know, trying to find different perspectives and different ways of talking about different sectors of American life. and so. This seemed like an interesting way to start a conversation about race in America. We have a short memory, they want to talk about history and race and examine our, our own past a lot. If you're an African American, who wants to contemplate the kind of misery that your ancestors went through? So it's hard to contemplate the past. In 2015, WGN America launched the 10-part series Underground. It chronicles the perilous journey of a fictional group called the Macon Seven. It's such an important part of American history. I think uh, is, is really uh, a landmark moment for television. Much of the new research about the railroad is reflected in Underground's characters and events. Let me tell y'all a cautionary tale about a slave who tried to run. I think it's important in storytelling to tell the true stories. Every character is inspired by something real or someone real. My name's Eric. So along the way, you meet historical characters. Road you got ahead of you, 600 miles deep south. Stealing yours from the hell you barely escaped in 600 miles back through enemy territory. Actress Aisha Hines plays Harriet Tubman, a role for which there really is no preparation. For someone like Harriet Tubman, who has had the kind of impact um, just on in history, it, it I had a meltdown after our first camera test. Shut up, get a tail. Staying authentic often means exposing the actors to some of the same types of dangers their real life counterparts dealt with. It's 116 degrees outside. That's a real swamp. Those are real snakes. They can't get rid of those snakes. All those things uh, bring the characters to life and that you're going through it. Whether it's the physical hardships or empathy, the actors feel a deep connection to the characters and their stories. They should be celebrated. Uh, and we need to 
change the narrative, I think, and say, no, these are superheroes. You know what I mean? They're, this is exciting. There was so much greatness in it. You walk away really feeling pride in the liberators, the African-Americans of the time. I mean, it's really an American story. There's something that uh, speaks to the values that, that we prize, uh, courage and freedom, and boldness, audacity, and willingness to speak out against oppression. Up next, follow the North Star to Freedom and find out how the Underground Railroad really worked. Shrouded in mystery and myth, no one will ever know how many slaves follow the North Star to freedom. Usually traveled by night, the Underground Railroad, by necessity, was a clandestine system. Traffic peaked around the years of 1850 to the end of the Civil War, and estimates of travelers range from 30 to 100,000. And new research tells us that much of what we thought we knew about the Underground Railroad is probably wrong. Underground Railroad serves as an antidote to those people who still today would have you believe that the slaves were happy that they went along with enslavement. By the start of the Civil War, four million blacks worked the soil and served the masters of the so-called slave states. As early as 1840, the numbers of those attempting to escape reached enough critical mass to introduce the term Underground Railroad into the national vocabulary. The Underground Railroad was an enterprise in which there could be danger at both ends. Once you made that decision, you were prepared all too often to leave behind your friends, your family. You were stepping into an unknown land and you could not trust everyone you met. Complicating an already treacherous journey were fugitive slave acts requiring all Americans, north and south of the Mason-Dixon line, to report suspicious activities to authorities. Slave hunting became an industry. There were traders who made a nice income turning in black folk who were fleeing north. But ingenuity could save the day, like the man dubbed Henry Box Brown, who had himself shipped to an anti-slavery society in Philadelphia. Anything you could think of, someone tried to, to get from a slavery to freedom. And there is a wonderful image we have of, of Henry Box Brown as they take the, the top of his crate off. Young men made up the majority of runaways. Families faced obvious obstacles and escapes by large groups like the Voyage of the Pearl out of Alexandria, Virginia in 1848 often proved too daring. The largest mass escape attempt by water in the history of the Underground Railroad, many of the enslaved people were punished by being sold further south. Two of the Pearl's 77 passengers, the Edmondson sisters, were spared that fate. The author of Uncle Tom's Cabin, Harriet Beecher Stowe, paid for their freedom. Later, they would become celebrities in the abolitionist movement. But the sisters were an exception, and despite all the barriers, slaves still sought freedom. We know that certainly thousands of people each year from the various slave states made their way north to freedom. Over the years, the secrecy of the Underground Railroad inevitably led to misconceptions and myths, some of which the abolitionists seemed to encourage. Even today, unverified legend and lore surrounds the Underground Railroad, most recently in a popular book claiming the use of quilts to send signals to its travelers. Based solely on oral tradition, the theory laid out messages quilts could communicate. Quilts remain controversial. In, in the Underground Railroad lore. There are people who still believe that, that they work, but the general feeling is maybe there's been an overemphasis on the existence and use of quilts. Above all, experts caution, we must avoid mythology that somehow romanticizes the Underground Railroad. Or that it was some sort of 
game and that it was always exciting when in fact people went through hairbreadth escapes. They suffered immensely. There were people who died, people who were within sight of freedom who were caught and returned. The Underground Railroad is an enduring part of American history. It reminds us that even in the bleakest of times and situations, the value of all of us working together for the common good. Coming up next, the North Star to Freedom finds two families who risked their lives to provide safe havens on the Underground Railroad. One of the prevailing myths of the Underground Railroad was that it was solely the work of white religious groups. Quakers and others certainly contributed, but many African Americans were leaders of the movement too. One of the heroes was a black activist named William Still. He was hailed as the father of the Underground Railroad, but chances are you've never even heard of him. You ask most people to name someone involved in the Underground Railroad, of course, Harry Tubman comes to mind. Or they might even say Frederick Douglass, John Brown. William Still was, if not as important, more important than the three people I just mentioned. William Still is Valerie's great-great-granduncle. Working at the Philadelphia Anti-Slavery Society, he reunited with his long-lost brother, and his life changed forever. That really inspired William, the importance of keeping documents, because in that way, families could always reunite once, uh, once the Civil War was over, once slavery was done. So still began to keep meticulous records, documenting the history of more than 800 former slaves. Later, he would publish their stories as a book. His importance, th that's part of it, that he actually wrote down all these things and no one can dispute them because they're actual facts. If he would have gotten caught with all these documents, he would have been in prison. He risked his life for it. You know that we are here celebrating our 120th reunion. Most summers, she attended the locally famous Still Family Reunion. But growing up, Valerie only vaguely knew about her distinguished family, like William's brother James, the black doctor of the New Jersey Pines, and William's daughter Caroline, the first black woman physician. And Paige up the middle, bounce feet again in the lane to still, little runner up off the glass and good, wow. Valerie had her own career as an elite athlete playing in the American Basketball League and for the WNBA's Washington Mystics. And she really wasn't a big fan of black history. I always went along with the myth that enslaved were like victims and you know I didn't want to be associated with that kind of thing. So not surprisingly, still didn't know much about her great great granduncle until she took a trip to Cincinnati in 2004. I, I got invited to the Freedom Center. All the families of people uh, or descendants were invited for the opening. It was eye-opening when I saw William's exhibit. Then when I first found out about William, I'm like, yeah, that's my uncle. And I went back and got my master's degree in African and African-American studies. Still has begun a series of books for children to tell her family's stories. I'm just excited that I can say that now I have a chance to show other people William Still and my, my great-great-grandparents, um, my great-great-grandfather, you know, those kind of people who were fighting. So this is one of my prized possessions. This is the famous Underground Railroad book. Today, she counts this first edition copy of William Still's book among her greatest family treasures. Um, I can feel it vibes when I touch this every time I open it. She often visits Eden Cemetery outside Philadelphia, where her family and many other leaders of the black abolition movement are buried. It's really a sacred moment for me when I go. I, I always give honor to them. Um, I, I think it's powerful and it always touches me in that way. It always, and it always reminds me, never forget where we come from. More than 400 miles from the Philadelphia Anti-Slavery Society on the shores of Lake Erie, you can find another hotbed of abolitionist activity along the Underground Railroad. 
you were a slave that was seeking for freedom, the shortest distance to go from slave territory was up here through Ashtabula uh, City and the Hubbard House. Colonel William Hubbard, his wife Catherine, and their children moved west to Ashtabula, Ohio in 1834. Their home, nicknamed Mother Hubbard's Cupboard, proved a safe haven for hundreds of enslaved on their way to freedom in Canada. For the slave traffic that came through the Hubbard house, uh, mostly the slaves were transported to a yellow warehouse that was down in the docks in the harbor and they were hidden there until they could be boarded onto ships, taken across Lake Erie to St. Catharines. Despite the Hubbard's significant influence in the community, the activity at the house did not go unnoticed. We have evidence that twice he and uh, Catherine were summoned to Columbus to answer charges of violation of the Fugitive Slave Act. The cases were never brought to trial. They were settled out of court. Preserving the house and its heritage was the life's work of great-great-grandson, the late Tim Hubbard. It needed everything. It was in terrible condition. And Tim set about writing things around as soon as he got it under the umbrella of the Historical Society. It took years of painstaking attention to restore the house. Today, you can visit and feel the hand of history in its rooms. Every group of visitors, you know, comes for a different reason. Some come just to look at the restoration and the antiques. Some come because they are interested in the history of the Underground Railroad and, and what it is that occurred here. So all through the 1830s, we find 1834, the Ashtabula County Anti-Slavery Society is formed. Um, William Hubbard, whose house you just visited, uh, was one of the founding managers here. Every fall for nearly 40 years now, Hubbard House organizes a pilgrimage of some of the dozens of locations connected to the Underground Railroad in Ashtabula County. Visitors can take a self-guided drive along its historic byways and find landmarks like the inn where Harriet Beecher Stowe wrote Uncle Tom's Cabin. Where is Eagle now? South of 45. The Hubbard family of the 21st century hopes these traditions continue for generations to come. People gained their freedom this way and that other people took enormous risks to see that they got their freedom. I love this story and I want it to, I want it to continue. When the North Star to Freedom returns, join us on an authentic Underground Railroad trail. Finding safety on the Underground Railroad often meant blazing a path through woods like these. This trail in Woodlawn Manor is officially part of the Network to Freedom, a group of hundreds of underground railroad sites supported by the National Park Service. Members of the public can come here to see what it was like to travel in the footsteps of runaway slaves. I think it's very important to be able to as closely as possible mirrors some of the experiences that African Americans experienced in the past. Well, why would you escape? Every year, hundreds walk this trail frequented at the height of the Underground Railroad. The spirits of our ancestors still are walking that walk. I get teary. So, I want to experience that with them. I've been interested in history for my entire life, and here was a story that I didn't know much about. Mike Robinson came here on a tour nearly 10 years ago, and he's been coming back most weekends ever since. So if you were one of the slaves on this plantation, how many of you would try to escape? After I took this tour once as a guest, You're I decided that this was a story that needed to be told, and it hadn't been told very often. You've never thought about this before, 
So which direction would you go in? As a guide, Mike encourages hikers to imagine the experiences of the runaways. These are blackberry bushes. How many blackberries do you see? Uh, we like to make this less of a lecture and more of a conversation. We've got two candidates here. Which one over here? Okay, how about that one? This one? Is it old? Is it large? Is it Y-shaped? It's the wrong tree. Okay, but can you see a problem with um, any type of landmark? It's based on your interpretation of what it's supposed to look like, right? The Underground Railroad can probably shelter you, at least for that evening. They can feed you, they can clothe you, and they can probably put you in the false bottom of a wagon and take you 20 miles in a night, when otherwise you might only be able to do 5 or 10 miles in a night. At the end of the trail, just like those who made their way here so long ago, Travelers come to the Sandy Spring Quaker Meeting House, a place to rest and reflect. It's an experience that really wakes you up, you know, mentally, spiritually, and you just have a, a great appreciation of what they had to go through. Learned a lot about local history, who passed through the area, what slaves went through on their escape routes. I think my kids learned a lot. It was a really good experience. It is a reminder of how far African American and blacks in this country have come and what their struggle has been and how they have overcome such odds. If you want an Underground Railroad experience of your own, you can visit the National Park Service website at nps.gov and search for Network to Freedom. We hope you have enjoyed our journey along the Underground Railroad. I'm Robin Hamilton. Thanks for watching.